welcome back to the mind of watercolor and have you heard the news what news steve what are you talking about you know i don't do a whole lot of reviews unless there's something new or something i'm very interested in that i've not tried before this fits into the new category and this is big news I think. So let's see what we got here. This is from Wet Paint. One of the few places at the time of this video that I was able to find this particular product. I'm sure it will be everywhere soon. But kudos for Wet Paint for getting this so quickly. And I know a number of you out there know what this is and heard that this was coming. When you think of watercolors, other than my favorite, which is M. Graham. I like lots of brands. But what's one of the first most universal brands that comes to mind? Yes. Daniel Smith. You're probably saying, well, Steve, Daniel Smith's not new. Oh, but wait. What's that word right there? Uh, that's right, folks. Daniel Smith has gotten into the gouache game. Yay! And the crowd goes wild. And I purchased... 12 of their colors. Now, so box one, I'll just show you as they come out of the box. Buff Titanium, Raw Sienna, Cobalt Blue. And by the way, there are 22 colors in the range. I did not order all 22. In box number two, we have Wisteria. And I will go through my color choice rationale when I'm done with this uh, unveiling here. Pure All Red, very basic choice. Of course, ultramarine blue. That's two boxes down. Let's open box number three. Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone, Magenta, Spring Green. And last but not least, box number four. Naturally, Titanium White, Ponce Yellow Light, and lastly, Ponce Yellow Deep. Let's take a look at the full line first, and then we'll get to my color choices. These are all 22 colors. This is a good range and it gives you some options. One thing I noticed is that all but five are single pigment colors. And every color in the line is either excellent or very good. That's light fastness one or two. Actually, 18 of the colors are excellent and only four of them are very good. No light fast rating below, very good. So that's encouraging. Just a very nice usable range. Perhaps in the future, don't know for sure, they may be expanding on this range. All right, so just to discuss my color choices, this is pretty much a split primary palette. A warm and cool blue, a warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool red. And then I've got two light opaques, uh, which in gouache, that's pretty important. These are great for mixing lighter colors, especially if you need them to be opaque. Then I've got uh, two secondaries, a wisteria and a spring green, and two earth tones. Burnt Sienna or Raw Sienna. That was the idea behind my color choices. I will put a list down below so you know what I chose, in case you're interested, um, and doing some of the same thing. Now, uh, there were, as I said, 22 colors in this range, and there was a lot of redundancy. So there's really not a need to buy 22 colors, unless you're loaded with money, because that's pretty expensive. <laughs> this gouache is a bit pricey. Just to reiterate a point I've made in other videos about gouache, if you don't know if you like gouache or you want to try it, then pick a couple of lighter colors that are easy to mix with regular watercolor, and they do mix together absolutely fine. Although you want to bring watercolor into your gouache palette, usually not vice versa. All right, so I have a page in my sketchbook all set up to swatch these out. Let's swatch these out. I've also managed to resurrect the test swatches from my gouache review a few years back, and we're going to do some comparison. I'm not going to do a lot of uh, rating yet. I'm just going to see. I've got the four best, what I consider the four best gouache brands uh, that I tried and tested before. We're just going to see generally how it compares. And if you're interested, hopefully set you on the path to making some choices of your own. All right, let's get started swatching here. I'm going to start with Ultramarine Blue. I like to look inside the tube to begin with to see if there's any separation. Some brands are bad about it, like uh, Winsor Newton. 
can't ever tell about it though because uh sometimes it could just be from shelf life they separate after a while but this looks great however and to start with i just put enough water just to get it to spread uh, i don't personally paint with gouache extra thick so i like to swatch it the way i would paint with it so i'm adding enough water just so it will uh, go down smoothly now Dark color gouache is usually uh, pretty transparent. It's very, very similar. You see that one right over that black, and you can't really even tell that it's uh, the least bit opaque. So if you're uh, just getting into gouache, you don't know whether uh, you want to do it or not. Again, I say buy a white or something like titanium buff or something very light like this wisteria and mix your watercolors with it. That way you're buying one, maybe at the most two or three tubes and just use uh, your darks from your watercolor and it does depend on the brand so one comparison point we'll make already is that Windsor Newton is probably an exception to that Windsor Newton is known for its opacity in almost all colors even its dark colors because it was uh, one of the oldest brands of gouache out there and was considered a designer gouache so uh, People who use Windsor Newton depend on its opacity all the way down into the darks. When you get more into fine art gouache, uh, that became less and less of an issue or a trend. Uh, M. Graham, for instance, you can see uh, in the darks, it's very transparent. Next, we're going to do cobalt blue. This is uh, slightly lighter, and I can tell there's more opacity here, but not a whole lot. Still pretty transparent. Now keep in mind, if you're new to gouache, you can use gouache exactly like transparent watercolor. You do not have to paint opaquely. Um, even though a lot of gouache painters do that, they add white, um, you can do a lot of it. You can see here, especially down here in these uh, tents, that it looks like watercolor because it is watercolor. And the more water you add, the more transparent it's gonna be. Once again, especially in these dark colors. All right, let's move along the color wheel to Wisteria. Now, this is a light color, so I'm expecting this to be fairly opaque. It's still early, folks, but this is a <laughs> this is a contender. Oh, for sure, I think it's going to be for some of the all-time best squash. I think it's going to be right up there in my top four list. That was good. Let's get another one. If you haven't seen my gouache review, which is a few years old now, I don't remember exactly two or three. I'll put the link down below to that gouache review. I didn't really find any difference between uh, the my top four choices. I thought they were all equally good quality. Uh, they had different strengths. I ranked Schmincke, uh number one, but... Uh, I tell you, Holbein was just absolutely superb. Windsor Newton had the biggest range. I mean, M. Graham, I love M. Graham. One of the things I love about M. Graham is that it pans better than all the others because it doesn't crack as much, I think, because it's got honey in it, just like their watercolors do. All right, moving along the color wheel, I'm going to do quinacridone magenta next. This is a darker color, so I'm guessing it won't be quite as opaque. And I am correct. One of the things, I, I'm careful to paint these swatches because one of the things I like to test is how smooth a velvety laydown it will do. Uh, that's usually very important to most gouache painters. I think it's important, uh, at least for the kind of painting I want to do, to have the darker colors be more transparent just because... Uh, you get the maximum light transmission when you do tints like this. But then you can add the opacity uh, in the lighter colors when you need to by adding white or something like buff titanium. All right, next we're going to do Pyrrol Red. A very bright fire engine red. The lighter color, so there should be some opacity to this. Very bright. Nice smooth lay down too. Very nice. All right, I'm going to insert the burnt sienna there since it's a reddish brown. It'll be roughly in that area of the color wheel. Beautiful. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Um, since we're getting into the yellows, let's do raw sienna first, and then we'll go through the yellows. Raw sienna is an ochre-like color, but uh, a little more red than green. Semi-opaque as gouache goes. Now let's move on to Hunt's uh, Yellow Deep. Wow, that is vibrant. That is rich. Look how vibrant, even after I tint it out, it's just like super powerful. Wouldn't take much of that to do anything. Next, Hunt's a Yellow Light. Lovely color. I expected a little more opacity out of these two. So I guess it's about right. I didn't have Winsor Newton in that color, but you can see Winsor Newton still kind of wins the prize for opacity and uh, velvety flat laydowns. All right, next we're going to look at Spring Green. Well, it's a very usable color, very bright. All right, let's get into the two light colors. These are colors that you might use to mix with to get uh, additional opacity. Buff Titanium. Now again, I am using enough water to spread these uh, evenly in a flat lay down uh, without being thick like brush strokes, like an impasto. And usually if it's a good gouache, it'll still have some opacity even at that dilution which it does. That's pretty good opacity. All right, and last but not least, titanium white. If you do a lot of gouache painting, you will use a lot of titanium white. Titanium white is what you add to any of these other colors to make them more opaque, and it will also lighten them, of course. Well, one of the reasons I make these so incredibly intense is so that you can add white for opacity. Yeah, that's pretty opaque. Pretty darn good. It has all the earmarks of a quality gouache, so I don't think we have any issues on that mark. Right now, uh, it's going to be hard to tell. And over time, as you use them, uh, there were no separations in any of the tubes separating from the binder, which is a common problem with a lot of brands of gouache. And the longer they sit on a shelf, the more likely you are to see that anyway. So, But kudos to uh, Daniel Smith for putting out what looks to be, uh, at first blush, a uh, really high quality gouache. All right, so I'm going to doodle a little bit. All right, so we'll do a little fall scene here for you. Uh, this will be a little test painting, and it's just going to allow me to use pretty much all the colors in the palette. See how they mix, see how they paint. And you'll notice uh, that I use them opaquely in places and I use them transparently in places. And that kind of points back to the comment I made about how these will work just like regular watercolor. You dilute them enough. So you'll see, like, for instance, uh, some of the tree tops that I extend up. I just dilute with water. Um, I add some little more depth to the sky later on, you'll see. And that was all just diluted with water. And it looks just like watercolor. But then, of course, the advantage of gouache is that you can add opaque colors. So, uh, just to recap, I think it's a quality gouache. Uh, my recommendation, though, is that if you have plenty of gouache that you're happy with, that you think is good quality, there's no reason to buy this. This doesn't offer anything new. This is just another gouache available that at first look seems to be a really high quality gouache. Now I'll be interested to see if they end up adding more colors like Daniel Smith tends to do. Right now the biggest range out there is Windsor Newton. They just have a ton of colors. The largest range of all and I don't know, who knows, maybe Daniel Smith is going to try to compete down that road, but it'll be interesting to see. The other thing to consider is if you're getting into gouache, who's your supplier? Where do you normally go? Right now, uh, Wet Paint has these. I think there's probably a few other minor art supply stores that have it, but you're going to start seeing it pop up in other places pretty quickly. It's not on Amazon yet. Didn't find it at Blick. Didn't find it at 
Jerry's Artorama. I didn't find it at Jackson's. Didn't find it at Cheap Joe's. Again, at time of this video. That'll probably change very rapidly. But where do you like to order? Maybe if there's a local shop where you get your art supplies, if they carry a high quality gouache of any brand, that probably is a good idea to make that your brand. So point is Daniel Smith does not seem to offer anything new or exciting other than it's Daniel Smith. And they seem to be paying a lot of attention to quality. And here you can see this is the advantage to using gouache is adding these little opaque bits at the end. One of the advantages. Gouache is just a lot of, a lot of fun to paint with. Thanks everyone. Appreciate you watching. Hope this was helpful and enjoyable. Thank you patrons for supporting this channel. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.